Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rep Care. Um, so today's video I'm going to try and kind of finish off to a point. I'm sure I'll think of some substrates I haven't done, but my substrate series. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the substrate options that are not suitable. And that is either they're not suitable at all, so you shouldn't use them around rats full stop, um, or that they're not suitable for substrates, but they can be useful for other things. Um, so I'll start off with the things that you don't ever want to use. And um, I'll probably forget some of this, but this is just off kind of the top of my head. So first thing to really very, very, well, just avoid altogether, is clay-based cat litters. So clay-based cat litters are, um, basically a kind of minerally composition used for cats quite commonly um probably fine for cats i don't really know i don't know cats however they are not fine for rats and the reason is rats will gen generally um do something called pica pica is eating a bit of bedding so it's perfectly natural per perfectly normal um you need to account for that when you're dealing with rats um the problem with the clay-based clay stuff is it <laughs> uh, little babies are out playing um the problem with the clay-based stuff is it doesn't um, kind of be digested, it just sits there in the stomach and it causes blockages and all sorts and basically you want to avoid it like the plague. So that's one never to use. Um, another one that I wouldn't use is any of the interesting cat litters that contain a lot of kind of minerals and such. So you can get some of the paperish, when I say paperish, the very cheap paper cat litters. If you read the ingredients, it's a little bit interesting. There isn't a lot of paper in there. There's a lot of other crap. Um, avoid those. Again, they can be toxic. They can be kind of have clay type fillers in them. Um, so you don't want them in the rat's guts. And um, you can also sometimes get kind of pearly ones as well. I would also avoid, avoid those. In fact, generally speaking, the only cat litter to use is paper cat litter. So not paper based, paper cat litter. There's a difference. Um, the paper cat litter is things like Breeder Select. Um, Biocatalyte used to be OK, but that's quite fragrant now. So I personally avoid it. Um, I think Yesterday's News is a well-known brand in the US from, from memory. Um, there's also Back to Nature, which is sold for small animals, which is basically the same as Breeder Select less a little bit um, and paper lit and such in the UK. So they're all proper recycled paper based cat litters. They're fine to use. So you really do one on them. They're not amazing substrates, but they're not going to kill the rats either. Um, maybe I should actually mention that one later on. I um, might do a really quick video on that. Um, so you don't want to use those. Um, trying to think of what else you must should absolutely not use. Um, you don't want to use anything kind of powdery, sandy, earthy type stuff, again, from the dust point of view. Um, there's not very much that people use in that, but I have seen some people literally put sand in a cage and that's just like, no, um, because of the dust and the natural irritants there, it's not something you should consider. Um, stuff that I would generally not recommend you to use, um, but may have its place, limited place, would be things like, well, I'll start with one of my personal favourites that I use a lot of, hay. Hay is an excellent enrichment kind of bedding, um, nesting material type thing. It's a crap substrate. Same for straw. Um, and it does. there is certain types of straw that have been specially treated that can make okay beddings, like kind of rape straw, that kind of thing. This I'm talking about, you just kind of buy a bale of straw, throw it into the cage thing. The reason they're crap is, going back to our kind of three main things, absorbency is virtually non-existent. Unless you've done a lot of stuff to the straw, and actually the hay really isn't absor absorbent at all, um, it doesn't do a lot. It basically just sits in there and stews and gets nasty. So um, I would generally avoid any hay and straw as a substrate. That doesn't mean it's not perfectly good to put in the cage if it's a decent quality hay, if it's kind of dust extracted and such. And like I say, I use a lot of it for enrichment purposes. Another one, very similar principle, shredded paper. So people think, great idea. I've got a shredder, I'm shredding all this paper. I'll put it in the rat cage. It'd be a great substrate. I've seen how good cardboard is. But actually, yet again, there's the same problem around absorbency. Cardboard works quite well because it's got a kind of much more absorbent texture. The stuff done to that paper that's changed it, made it thicker, made it more absorbent, generally better. It's still not the amazing absorbency, but it's pretty good. Paper, shredded paper is crap. <laughs> um, and I say this having experienced it and used it in the past myself. Um, it just doesn't have that level of absorbency you want. The other thing you really need to watch out with shredded paper is when you shred it, particularly shredding it at home, um, there is no kind of thing to extract the dust from that. And it generates quite a lot of dust in the cutting process. 
Um, so it's one that you do have to be careful from that irritant point of view as well. Enrichment wise, it's also great though. So you can see I've got a little digging box here for the babies that I sprinkle a bit of food in it. They quite enjoy it. And um, what I did when I got the shredded paper is I made sure to shake it out to kind of loosen all the dust off that and um, left the dust in the bag that I got it in, stuck it in here and it's great enrichment. So those are two good examples of very good in their place, but crap as substrate things. Um, other things that I like that, so corn co cob litter, so it's another litter, you do have to be careful with litters. Um, corn cob litter is okay as a litter in some circumstances. The problem with that is it's too absorbent, so you go from one extreme to the other. Um, it's a massively absorbent thing, and what it can mean is there's a very dry layer above the substrate, which can cause things like ringtail. Um, so you have to be quite um, careful with that. Um, I wouldn't use it around babies at all, um, and you really don't need to use it around rats but it would not be good as a large area of substrate you could perhaps get away with it um for a kind of very short period of time um just to kind of litter tray that kind of thing or a small area or even maybe underneath the layer but you don't want to use too much of it because of that absorbency thing rats need a certain level of humidity um i think it's probably around 40 to 70 percent the rate of the comfortable range but actually i find 50 to 60 works quite well for the rats in a one um but it's one that you kind of need to be quite careful with. Um, other things people might use for substrate. Newspaper. So much like the shredded paper, people might get newspapers, read the newspapers. What do I do with this? Oh, I'll just put it in the rat cage. It'll make a great substrate. So it fails on two counts. Absorbency again, because it's just the paper. It's crap for that. And um, I've seen people use it under fleece before. This does not help much. <laughs> again, I've tried it. I've been there. It's nasty. Um, it just gets soggy and icky and newsprint gets all over everything and it's foul. Um, it's also crap from an enrich enrichment point of view as a flat surface layer. Um, what it's quite nice for though, and where, where you can get use out of it, is again a bedding material. Um, rats like to tear it up, so why not get your newspaper, tear it into strips and throw it into the cage and they will make lovely nests out of it and they will get a lot out of that. So it's very useful for that but you don't want to use it as a substrate. And, and it's something that you'll see again and again with a lot of these things. Um, they they can be used um, and they can have their uses but you want to remember those three kind of um, enrichment, um, absorbency and kind of irritant levels. You want to remember those when you're considering what to use as a substrate but actually when you're talking about a nesting material, when you're talking about a litter, you have very different properties. Um, so actually I'll mention um, the kind of paper cat litter here as well. So paper cat litter um, I wouldn't say it's entirely unsuitable to be a substrate. It's okay. Um, it's very expensive for what you get. Um, it is very absorbent, but not as absorbent as the corn cob litter. Um, so I don't love using it from that point of view, but for, for adults, it's not bad. Its major letdown is around the enrichment side of things. So it sits in a fairly flat layer. Um, rats can dig in and move it around and they do. Um, occasionally I've accidentally left a bag of um, cat litter out on free range and they do like to dig that out, um, it gets everywhere. Um, but it's not the same as like a really kind of three dimensional thing. They can't form that many structures in it. So, so it's fairly poor from an enrichment point of view. But otherwise it's okay. It's just, you don't want to be spending that much money on something um, and what generally happens <laughs> the babies are eating the grandma mog <laughs> um, yeah it, what generally happens is because it's so expensive people then only put a thin layer on, on it and then that really is crap from an enrichment point of view um, generally speaking you're far better off with a decent substrate that's kind of like um, kind of chopped card or a decent um, shaving remembering the kind of low low dust um, heat treated type shaving or aspen or that kind of thing um but yeah so that's one to bear in mind or soil everybody should move to soil unless they've got a carpet <laughs> um they're already kicking crap out at the moment i've just swept up <laughs> um, but yeah so so that's my kind of things to avoid point of view um, i'm sure i've probably have forgotten a few bits and pieces so um it'd be good if anybody's got any comments on things they think are unsuitable just to stick them in the comments on the video and I can definitely kind of confirm or deny or if you're not sure on something stick it in as well and I will answer on that one um, because whenever I do these videos I have like all these great things where I'm thinking beforehand oh, I'll mention this this and this and this and then the camera's on and I forget it all so you kind of get what I remember at the time um, but yeah so that's probably it on the substrate series for me um, we shall see what happens. I might um, do some more in the future. I do want to do one that explains about how to measure for and to um, kind of fit 
a perspex tray because I think a lot, a lot of a lot of people have been commenting and saying is they want kind of deep layer of substrate, but the thing they're struggling with is their cage doesn't suit it. Um, so I think that's a really important one to do. Um, so I might have a go at doing that later. I can't, unfortunately, I've got all my perspex trays, so I can't physically show you it, but I can tell you about the principles and what to kind of check for and such. But yes, so um, that's probably it from me. I will um, go and tempt the babies out because they're all mostly talking to Mog at the moment. I might let Mog out with them. Um, she's very good with the babies, actually, as their grandma, but she's meant to be eating right now, and she's not. <laughs> um, yeah, the babies are now... Um, only probably about four and a half weeks next in fact christmas day they will be separated from their mum and join their um cousins over at, well the lovecraft rats are coming here but i will probably then be able to complete my breeding se series because we'll have enough rats to do things to look at kind of that sixth week period um the selection which because it should have about 25 26 between all of our rats um, but show you the kind of things we're looking for with selecting rats and such so but i'm getting distracted now i really should stop this video and get on um, get on with the next one so over and out from me